I mean, I would say my earliest memory of Spider-Man, and Kemp and Justin have heard this a million times at this point. Uh, it's still a great story. But mm. yeah, uh, I, so I was born in Portugal, and our family crest is actually the spider. So my middle name is Aranha, which means spider in Portuguese. That's great. So my first like visual memory of anything was uh, John Romita Sr. Mm. image of Spider-Man in my room growing up. So it, you know every holiday, every birthday, it was always a spider-related gift coming from Portugal, uh, and it, it felt like it was almost, I don't know, destined or unavoidable. Like it, it was, I was on a collision course to do something spider spider-related. Someone well, put it in your room, yeah. literally. And you're like, well, this is it. This is it. This is it. Well, I remember my first start of Spider-Man was as a kid, I was obsessed with underroos. Like I mm. love, for yes. some reason. Yeah. They're fun to wear. And also <laughs> I didn't, my mom always likes to tell me, I didn't know which hero I wanted to be that day. Mm. So she said I would wear up to eight underroos t-shirts at once. So awesome. I could, cha yeah, I could change. Like layers. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, and, and I wanted, and, and Spider-Man was obviously one of them, but I was obsessed obsessed with action figures growing up like mm -hmm. a really good even before like I could you know, read comics and stuff and I remember the way she would kind of convince me to go shopping with her was she would give me my Spider-Man action figure and I would grip it so tight that the the, the black web uh, spider on the back would actually wear off and I remember one I to this day still remember my best friend as a kid had the newer Spider-Man action figure and I would just be so upset that he had the cooler looking one than I did and it's like from that day on it's just like Spider-Man. That's awesome. Was it the Secret Wars Spider-Man? Which uh, yeah, he had the Secret Wars Spider-Man. There you go. Yeah, he yeah. had it. Yes. We were talking about earlier. We were talking about um, the first things we saw. Like what? What was it? Was it a comic? Was it a poster? Yeah. And we were mentioning um, the reruns of the 1960s Spider-Man yes. cartoon, and I and they ran <laughs> during the afternoon, and I just remember seeing the opening credits with the greatest theme song of all time <laughs> and the lyrics tell his whole story uh, and there's that moment when he swings by and he waves he waves <laughs> yeah. to the camera but in my mind it's like he's waving to me that's awesome and from that something clicked and I said he's my guy mm. uh, and my parents went with it and uh, when I was in fourth grade my mom it was my birthday. She brings to school a sheet cake, John Romita Spider Man, <laughs> and that for one day I was the coolest. I was a cool kid in class. <laughs> uh, but that's it. It's those early seeds, mm -hmm. and you just boom, you pick it, and then my family was cool with it. Yeah, I grew up in um, Brooklyn, so I think Spider Man stood out. I don't have a single comic, but he stood out because he was one of the first superheroes who was in a city I recognized. Mm -hmm. Because all the DC mm -hmm. comics I was looking at, they were in Metropolis, they were in Gotham. Right. Yeah. Even the X-Men were like upstate, which I hadn't, I didn't go upstate <laughs> New York till I <laughs> yeah. was like 20 years old. What's, what's I really right? was like a townie in Brooklyn. Right. So, you know, my view of the city was usually in a Spider-Man comic. But I remember, I don't, there was no one comic. One of the things that made Spider-Man always jump out at me was he always seemed to be beating up or beating people who were more powerful than him. Mm. Spider-Man would, beat the juggernaut. Spider-Man would fight all of the X-Men in Secret Wars. Spider-Man would beat like the wheels off of Iron Man. Mm -hmm. He would always figure out a way. He was kind of like a, you know, there's like those God level heroes like Thor and the Hulk and Juggernaut. And for some reason, Spider-Man would always kind of tap into something mm -hmm. that even though he wasn't this godlike hero, he always managed to like beat people who were bigger than him or stronger than him. And that really, I think, kind of tapped into this like underdog quality mm -hmm. that made him super duper appealing to me. And he'd come back home bruised and beaten yes. and have to- And yeah, still have to go it. to class. That's right, that's right. Yes. So his you own know. suit back up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, it was the, the, the 1967 cartoon series, which was still running in the 70s. And then in 77, there was a live action Spider-Man. Oh, yes. that, you know, so if yep. you're watching you know, Battlestar Galactica or Chips or whatever was on, mm -hmm. so that was there. That, that wasn't as good, but my, my young self was still very excited. And then uh, I think the, the Corgi helicopter that has the web rotor, my mom bought me that at Solvang. Wow. And that was uh, the first really exciting Spider-Man thing I had in my life. <laughs> I always avoid this question because um, I also remember the um, animations in the, um, in, you know, in the morning, we would watch mm -hmm. those reruns. And I only remember the theme song. Mm -hmm. I love singing it, mm -hmm. but I was more of an X-Men person. 
There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> plenty, plenty of crossover there with Spider-Man. Many, many crossovers. Well, I, I guess uh, if I had to go to my earliest memory, I don't know where, I will never be able to remember exactly where I saw it. It might have been because I grew up on Hollywood Boulevard looking out over the Chinese theater um, from my window. Um, it might have been it might have been just like the people in costume just dressed hang out <laughs> hanging out on next to the man chinese theater that i used to walk past every every other day um with my parents but um somehow i became obsessed with i think the iconography um i've always just been so fascinated with visual design and mm -hmm. and you know and Art was my first language, mm. and so like I, I, I think English was like a distant third. <laughs> so as you can tell, and and I think, um, and I think my so my earliest memory is of Spider-Man is actually being in kindergarten, and they were insisting that I learn the alphabet. Like I said, distant third, um, and they were insisting that I learn the alphabet, and I said I do not have time. This is finger painting time. And I am really busy making my painting of Spider-Man right now. Wow. <laughs> and I refused to stop. And all the other kids have sat down and I started having like a tantrum in the school <laughs> in, in kindergarten because I was like, I'm not done with the foot. <laughs> I'm still trying to draw the foot and I need to get it right before I'm done. And, and I remember they had to like pull me away and take me to the principal's wow. office. It became a whole thing. It became a whole thing. They brought my parents in and, the, and I refused to do any work until I could do only finger painting. And, and they were like, well, what if we make a deal with you that once a week you can, because at that, there used to be arts education in this yes. country. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sorry, politics. <laughs> um, there used to be arts education and we had an art teacher that we, like the class would go see, like our kindergarten class at Los Feliz Elementary would go see once a week. Yeah. And they said, what if we give you an extra hour a week just by yourself with the art teacher? Will you learn your alphabet? And I was like, deal. Wow. So thankfully, um, someone was able to get me to learn how to speak, and now you can suffer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Spider-Verse was made. <laughs> <laughs> how to draw comics the Marvel way. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So not only the book, which you know, it starts out with the book, but then I got the video cassette. Ooh, wow. And, oh, wow. Uh, and so the video cassette. You are fancy. Yeah, it, it, it was fantastic. It's, it's quite a piece of technology. Um, so even though it's about drawing comics, and of course what we're doing today is, is not exactly that, you're still, you're still posing the character and displaying them as dynamically and heroically as possible, which is what they're, they're driving home as the Marvel way. Right. And uh, so and even that section on composition, I still show it mm -hmm. um, because it's fantastic and, and you get their voices in your head. So there's this one section where they're showing like a panel that, that, that John Buscema has drawn. And um, he's done it mediocre. How the competitors would do it. <laughs> he's like, you see, it tells this story. It's okay, but it lacks drama and, and sheer excitement. And then Buscema chimes in, these panels are too vertical. They're too straight up and down, and they lack the power of a Marvel character. You know, like, so to, to, I watch that so much that those things are, they're in my head. Yeah, and so when we're in any review, wow. that's how he talks during the review. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> those voices. Yeah. Just in in any voices. review, their voices are in that review. Like, Amazing. But I will say like, when we're on set, when we're doing like a shoot, Bobby will get into the pose and say, this is how I want yeah. him to stand. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, you know, it's which, really cool. Which is what Stan used to do. He'd get yeah. up on his desk and he'd act out a story for whether it was Kirby or Busem or Ditko and he would act it out and then they would go. Uh, and I think that was so important to all of us. Whatever we saw, um, Marvel was very different from, the, from, from when they started doing merchandising. Mm -hmm. They used, or, or I'm sure the actual creators wanted to be involved. So when it came to posters, when it came yeah. to Spider-Man being on a Slurpee cup, uh, it was John Romita Sr. You know, he's the one that comes after Ditko yeah. and brings this whole soap opera slick style. And he kind of established, he, he literally did, and it was a thing we all look at this page of like, how to draw Spider-Man, yeah. how to do the webs. And, and John uh, Romita eventually became one of the art directors at Marvel. And he's the one that 
laid the groundwork so that when we saw these things as young people, they were right. There was a unified version of them, yeah. They were made by the people that understand and loved Spider-Man. Right. So as a kid, when you saw it, it looked real, it felt real. Well, whether it was a notebook or a poster or the, you know, the, the I had that cool uh, dune buggy that had the net that would like to launch off it, yeah. But like all that felt like it was coming from the same place, the same universe, you're right. Well, the thing is, like, you, you know, we, I feel like we've all probably been asked, why is po Spider-Man so popular? Like, we've all got that yeah. asked mm -hmm. question asked, and I think it just comes down to, like, you know, he is very, he's probably the most relatable hero you'll right. find. Right. And it's yeah. like, he, yes, he's fighting Doc Ock or Green Goblin or Venom, but at the same time, he's also worrying about his homework, is his aunt okay, is the girl going to like him? Right. You know, yeah. he has all of these, and it's like, he just is... That's what makes him like. Listen, I love Thor. I love Captain America. I love Iron Man. But like, there's something about Spider-Man. He has that just relatability that we can mm -hmm. connect to. And I think yeah. that's kind of why. At least I know I was always drawn to him because there's something that he's going on that I can say, I'm going through the same same, yeah. same right. thing. How does he deal with it? And I think yeah. that's why you know and we he's all fun gravitate about toward it. him. And he's funny about yeah, it. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a good time. It's not just not heavy or egocentric. It's it's you know and it's you. Yeah, snark Thank didn't you. exist when he started. Like yeah, now, snark is, is ubiquitous. Oh. Yeah. But at the time, his snark really stood out. Yeah. Especially in superhero comics, where people weren't self-effacing or self-deprecating. They were. Everybody was pretty serious. Serious. Yeah. yeah. And the heavier it got, the snark would like sort of rise to the occasion. You'd be like, oh, he's he's done. He's yeah. done. He's buried under a mountain of whatever it was, yeah. and then he would make some comment. But even that. that, you know, you know your you know, friends who use humor as a defense mechanism, exactly. right? And you're yeah. like, oh, that's like, weapon. that's how, yeah, like, that's how he's dealing with it. And you're yeah. like, yo, I know, I know someone, or I get in a moment yeah. where I'm super stressed, and I oh. make a joke of it to light it up, because it's, if it gets too serious, I'm not going to know totally. what to do. Mm -hmm. And just all those, he's, the, mm -hmm. the franchise, and whether it's Peter, whether it's Miles, they kind of have all that kind of thing in common where it's just, there's something about what they're going through, whether it's a superhero life or their normal life, that we can always find something to identify with. We just saw a screening of uh, Into the Spider-Verse with an orchestra backing it last night. Um, and there was something I didn't notice that was, you know, it's, it's a far off scene. It's right when Miles has been smashed by Kingpin, or Miles, uh, when Peter's been smashed by Kingpin. And he's telling Miles, it's gonna be okay, and it's clearly not gonna be okay. And he gives him this like dismissive, like, oh, just, just go, just go. It's fine. I'm fine. And I didn't realize it until seeing it, you know, again for the fifth time or whatever it was on the big screen. I was like, oh man, he's, he's still like portraying that everything's going to be totally chill and totally yeah. fine. And it, it raises the stakes even higher. Yeah, yeah, it does. Well, and it's also just like, that's such a great comforting thing when, you know, I know for me, like the idea of like, you know, you're, when I was growing up, like there was like, it wasn't always great. And yeah. the idea that I could, it was okay to like laugh at things and, and yeah. to find humor in situations that n didn't on the surface have them. Right. And that that could carry you through things is like such a wonderful tool for coping and getting through. I mean, I had to learn t not to laugh sometimes, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, and I think that's also what Peter Parker also had to learn right, sometimes. Yeah, right. You get punched harder sometimes w when you laugh too much. Um, but, uh, but I think, um, but I think there's a, like a great service there that it taught me, you know, I, I think for me, I'll just say like, there was, a, it was so refreshing to me. Like when we started doing it in 2015, Phil and Chris called me and wanted me to get involved in that. What was so refreshing about those comics is we had seen so many Spider-Man movies and, and, and it's, they're wonderful and awesome, but here was, a, and we'd seen a lot of superhero movies, but what was so great about it to me and was so appealing was that there was a character whose backstory wasn't rooted in tragedy mm. and that there was a character like, oh, there's this affirmation here mm -hmm. that parents supporting their kids and kids who actually have a commun uh, like a good established line of communication with right, their parents right, yeah. and who actually like want who love each other and are have a tight bond that that can be its own strength that is own superpower that can carry you through things and i hadn't seen it 
done quite mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um, because it was so rare for, you know, we see like all the like, your dad was killed by the this and mm -hmm. your mom was killed by that and your uncle died here. And here was like, no, we love you and we'll always support you. At the time, it was the first Sam Raimi Spider Man movies coming out. And we're like, oh my gosh, where do we point people to start reading? We can't point them back to the comics from the 60s. No one, he has a bow tie and mm. he rides a moped. Who's going to understand that? <laughs> so they. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so uh, they said, let's do the ultimate line so that we're, we're telling it again fresh. Fast forward 10 years, and now even the ultimate comics are complicated. Become, yeah. So the idea was to do Miles. Here again, here's this young teenager. But, as you said, let's make him different from Peter. Peter has the guilt. Every time he puts on the mask, he's doing that to make sure someone doesn't lose their Uncle Ben. Mm. So intentionally not having him with a tragedy, he comes from the, the point of view of, I'm a fan. This is cool. Right. And this Spider-Man has fallen. Someone needs to be Spider-Man. Oh, I get bit by a spider. I'll be Spider-Man, but he approaches it through joy. Right. And that helps, when he interacts with Peter, he, he helps him yeah. remember, like, you don't have to feel so guilty all right. the time. Right, right, right. Well, I, Look at I, all the good things you're doing. Yeah. I, I remember the conversations of, you know, when we, back in 2014, when we said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make a Spider-Man game. And, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned, like, how do we, there's so many movies, there's so many comics, there's so many, uh, you know, games. Yeah. Peter, sure. we're like, well, what are we going to bring that's new and different, just like the comics, right? And, you know, we're, we're thinking of all these different ways. Well, we'll we're not going to do the origin story. We're going to make a Mulder. We're going to make Otto his, his, like, father figure that he's, like, you right. know, wants to be. And we're like, what else? What, is there something to say? And we just re start, where do we start? Start with the comics. And we're reading, we're like... We just keep going back to like this Miles character is really freaking cool, yeah. and we're like, and I remember, you know, that's a for us as developers, you know, you're adding another character to an experience, and you're like, well, there's a big cost there. Like, you know, we're gonna build out this character. Is he gonna, you know, how is he gonna work with Peter? But we have, we just kept seeing like all the things you mentioned about what you loved about Miles and how what he brings to Peter, and now, but imagine they're in the exact same world. Imagine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then for us, it was like can we show him be a hero before he's ever even bitten by a spider? Yeah. And so that yeah, it's, cool. it, and, and I just remember, it's probably, I, don't, I make a lot of mistakes <laughs> in my job. I feel like it's one of the things as a group, we were like, that was the right, even though we knew it was gonna be hard and we how we're gonna have complications as we got into Spider-Man 2, now we have two heroes. Right. We were like, if we, do it, it's gonna be more than worth it. And I think like, you know, whether it's, you, see what, you know, Peter and Miles in the Spider-Verse, you see him in our universe, it's like, there's some, there's some, something really special when you see all of them come together. And I think for us, it's, it's one of the things I know, it's, you know, you always think about what's gonna get me to wake up in the morning, wanna do this, you know, every day. And it's like seeing them together and seeing how they, especially in Spider-Man 2, how they learn from each other, challenge each That's other. It. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of us, you know, talked about in Spider-Man 2, how can we make this story about requires, why, what, why, what about this story requires us having two heroes? Mm -hmm. And to see Miles from Spider-Man 1 be a hero before he gets powers and to Miles Morales learns the kind of Spider-Man he wants to be. And by Spider-Man 2, he's now telling Peter, hey, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's m one of my favorite things that the writers did was in Spider-Man 1, um, at near the end of the game, Miles asked Peter, what's the play coach? And in Spider-Man 2, at near the end, Peter asked Miles, what's the play coach? And to see his evolution and see that is just it, to me is, I think, something that I'm, I will always be proud of no matter what. You know, no matter what people think about the game and all yeah. that stuff, mm -hmm. it's one of the things that we, I feel like we were able to make our universe unique and to tell a story that I hope brings more people into the experience. Yeah. It, ha it helps to have what we, what we call North Stars. Mm. What is our North Star? Um, and part of it was what we talked about, uh, worlds colliding. Yep. The best Spider-Man stories are when Peter's world, his civilian life, collides with his costume yeah. life. Yep. And the other uh, North Star that we thought was very important, again, Let's do our research. Let's go back to Amazing Fantasy 15 mm. 
first appearance of Spider-Man. It's all there. And at the very last panel, Stan Lee writes, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Sometimes we shorten that. With great power comes great responsibility. We say, well, no, it doesn't always. Mm. With great power, there must, it's a choice, there must also come great responsibility. So collectively, whether we're making films, games, uh, we always say, what is our power? Our power is we are working with these characters that we love, that are known around the world for decades. People love these characters. We get to work with them. Also, we get to work with these amazing creators. Uh, and they're going to bring their vision to this amazing character. So that is our power. And we're given this platform and the support and money to create these big things that many people could see. What is our responsibility? Don't mess it up. Right. <laughs> Not only don't mess it up, make it great so that the current generation can be like uh, ourselves when we were younger. And we saw something and we said, oh, they get it. They get it, the character, they know it, and they made it. Now it's our responsibility. Make something so that when it, was, it is seen, it is played, one of the emotions or thoughts that the audience may have is, I can tell this was made by fans for fans. Uh, and so that is our responsibility. Here's all the awesome stuff. Not only don't mess it up, make it great and maybe even elevate it. Try some new things. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting going back to Miles Morales just to say because you know I agree with all the things about the characters but sometimes it's like the simplest things that connect with you and one thing that I, I remember made Miles because honestly by the time Miles Morales was created I kind of stepped away from comic books like as a reader mm -hmm. as much of a fan as I was I kind of gotten fed up with them and I didn't know why and there's this thing with Miles' character. Well, there's a thing that I noticed in comics and comic book characters as a kid. And it's just, I don't think it was anything done on purpose on the part of the creators, but it felt like characters of color were always the downgrade characters. Mm. They were mm. weaker. They had shittier powers. Yeah. So that if you have a group of kids sitting at a table and say, here's a superhero, who wants to be who? Mm. Falcon's last. Yeah. Black Panther's last. You know, there's always... Luke Cage is strong, he ain't no Hulk. Right. Mm. It's always this like Whopper Jr. version mm. of <laughs> a more established white hero. Right. I don't, I'm not saying it was done on purpose, sure. I'm saying as a kid it, who loved comics, yeah. no one wanted to be those characters. Yeah. And Miles, I wasn't even reading comics, it's so simple, I just thought it was nice that he had dope powers. Yeah. Yeah. The kid could turn invisible, he could shock you with electricity yeah. on paper, he w it was different, but he was as powerful as another Spider-Man. Just that. Right. Which, mm -hmm. and by making him that, everyone wants to be him. Yeah. yeah. Not just black kids. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want Miles' powers? Right. Mm -hmm. Miles, and I think this, what, what sort of Spider-Man has evolved into is, is this mantle that can sort of be taken on yep. by anybody. Yeah. My, my kid's eight years old. Miles is his Spider-Man. Right. That's who yeah. he recognizes mm -hmm. as Spider-Man first. He loves Peter, he loves Gwen, he loves, he loves them all. But Miles is his guy. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know any other, I mean, maybe there is, I, 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 off the top of my head, I can't think of another superhero franchise that allows you to embody the character and sort of become, you know, envision yourself as the character. Yeah, I actually, like, I love when fans are like, Miles is my favorite, Pete's my favorite, Miles is my yeah. favorite, Pete's yeah, my yeah. because that means, we have done something right, right. Exactly. that yeah. there is that is that is a character like like and even playing the game i'm like well i want to play as miles right now because yeah. this is the thing that i, I want to i'm in the mood to play miles but now i'm in the mood to play pete and then yeah. i want to go back and you go yeah. back and forth and like if you can make characters where there is kind of a debate about who's the better one yeah. then i think that's like mission accomplished that's right? what like, all fans do exactly, exactly right you know i don't want who, to be who like wins? silver it, surfer or like yeah. oh well, i got the power i don't want it to be up. one over the other that means we didn't yeah. we didn't we didn't make them dope. We yeah, didn't make right. we didn't make these characters someone you aspire to be like. Yeah. So like I think that's a you know like you know I watching Spider Verse last night and you're like you know you fluctuate between like oh 
I like Miguel now, and I like, right. the, and it's like all, and then, and then we have Gwen coming in, and it's like, well, you know, I remember when I first saw the movie for the first time, I'm like, Gwen's my favorite now. And then last <laughs> night I'm watching, and I'm like, uh, I think it's Miles now, you know, and then, and, 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 but that's healthy, that's I good, that's, that's good for good everything. Yeah. yeah, and You're, you know what it takes when you talked about, when you said wave, it takes years and it takes waves of new voices to come to the party. Yeah. At the beginning, there was a very small number of people who wanted to tell superhero stories right. or make Marvel stories. Mm. And over the years, through different on-ramps, whether it's the X-Men cartoon, no matter what it is, the more we can bring new waves of people yeah. uh, for, and have different voices and points of view, and that is when we get the authenticity. And someone comes in and says, you don't know what you're doing. It may be unintentional, but let me point out, oh, can you, what, what would you like, exp you know, how can we get it right? But it doesn't and, even have to be voiced as a criticism. I just say like, it's not, you're doing it wrong. Just make it doper. Yeah. Like the same thing right. that our right. own crews tell us when we're making the movie. Mm -hmm. right. What did they say when Mumbatan wasn't coming together? Right. The Indian animators got to together, cool. mm. sent us an email. Yeah. Yep. Make it doper. Right. Yep. It's not dope enough. Um, nothing makes me happier than knowing that people are really, you know, that they love Miles and that they find him like cooler than Peter. And I've often found that fans are, I, I think maybe if you were reading, grew up with the comics, you love Peter Parker. But I've met a lot of people who don't know anything about Spider-Man, like didn't grow up with Spider-Man. Yeah. But then Miles Morales is the one that they love, and I just love that about him. Miles Morales is fun for us to work on because I like that he's really fresh and he's younger, he's more youthful. Um, we can do more with his fashion, we can do more with his, you know, his animations. Um, and I just feel like there's more freedom in, in exploring who he is, especially that, uh, because he's younger as well in our universe. It, there, there's, it's, it's, it's another place where people can you know, draw, draw into it. Like for, uh, how am I, I going to put this? So we, I, was a, I was a really awkward kid as I start to stutter. Um, and when you're, when you're awkward and you mess up and you're insecure, you don't see a future for yourself. You don't see how you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer or police officer like my father was. Um, you do, and you might not necessarily be good at anything yet. And when someone creates a character that you see yourself in, and that character is aspirational, mm -hmm. you can start to see a future for yourself. Right. You know? right, right. Um, so if, if whatever it is we're making, that's our great responsibility, is to make that place where someone young and insecure and doesn't see a future for themselves goes, that's mine. I'm gonna cry. When I was, yeah. when I was a kid, I didn't want to be Spider-Man. I wanted to be Peter Parker. Because like you, he showed me a possibility. Yeah, he, so, yeah he, he's a big kid. You, he, and you wanted to be a big kid so bad. It, so he gives, the wonderful thing about these characters is, is they give young people an idea of a possibility. Mm -hmm. I could be like that. Can, can I tell you too, one of the, the best things I saw on the internet for the first game was a fan actually sent me a, a selfie of themselves and they were saying, it's my first day of school, guess who I'm dressed up as? And he dressed up as Peter Parker. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just remember being really touched because yeah, everyone really likes the Spider-Man suits, but the fact that some it was Peter kid Parker, in high school wanted to dress up as Peter mm -hmm. made me feel like we had done our jobs. Yeah. That's awesome. That's right. That's great. Really early on, you know, like I said, we had, there had been so many movies, so many comics, so many games were like, what, how are we going to, make this game resonate with the most passionate Spider-Man fans or Marvel fans out there. But like, how are we gonna surprise them? And we kind of, I kind of created this, this phrase of respect the DNA of the franchise, but don't be afraid to mix things up. And we've kind of taken that philosophy the entire time. And how can we bring that? Because we all know these fans are really, really passionate and they have a lot of thoughts. And I, I mean that in a great way. And people are like, do you ever get tired of it? I'm like, no, because if they stop talking about it, that's even worse. That's worse right. than like, you know, like I didn't like it. And I think we've done that, whether it's, you know, Miles and, you know, the Miles game completely re, 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 rethought of how we thought of the Tinkerer. And then obviously with Spider-Man 2, you know, we have a very popular character that people care a lot about in Venom. And we're like, okay, what's the part of the, and Jacinda and I, and Bobby and I talk about this all the time, is like, all right, what are the 
characteristics of the character that if we don't have, mm -hmm. we should hide. <laughs> we yes. should hide. Right. And it's like, okay, so Venom, you want him big. You want him, you want the teeth. He's got to sound like Tony Todd. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's, you know, he's got to have those great symbiote powers and just overwhelming strength. And like someone like Pete could never just, you know, it's going to be hard for him to mm. take down or Pete and Miles take down. But I'm like, okay, what's our, what's our, what's our, what's our change? Well, who is, the, who is he bond with? What's, what's that relationship that we can bring? And um, I think we're always looking for those things. And I think thinking about the, you know, me being a fan of the Spider-Verse films, I think what the first Spider-Verse film did for me was it gave me more confidence that we could even go further. Right. Yeah. We can continue to push. Cause like, right. I must, I, I'm in awe of your risk taking. You, I mean, those, <laughs> those films from the first one and the second one, there's a lot of big swings. Well, I think that's a really good segue into our North Star. Our North Star was, um, for this second one, was uh, you have to tell your own story. Yeah. And if you're talking about canon events, like canon events that try and like say that things have to be a certain way. Yeah. And here's this whole Spider-Verse, like all these characters yeah. are telling Miles how things are supposed to be for him and how these events are supposed to yep. go, how your suit's supposed to look, yep. how, your, how the style of your universe is supposed yep. to look, how everything, and we challenged it on every level to tell our own story and to tell Miles' story, and that he would find a way in every situation. Again, it's that affirmation he gets from his parents, mm. that the things that he was taught by them, that are the most valuable, and she makes him promise before he leaves. You know, you gotta promise me, you won't forget. Right? Yeah. You won't forget where, the, where you came from and what you've learned here and that you have a place to come to and to never let them tell you who you are. Right. And so that idea that you have to tell your own story, I think it sort of infected us across every level of our storytelling and our picture because and, and it's sort of like, well, we can't do things the way yeah. we've seen them before. But I have to say, because one thing I have, I, I'm both so in awe of but jealous of is that if you look at the Spider-Verse films, they are so comic book. Like, that is like they a comic. Books. There is so much complexity in comic. But I think back to watching, re-watching the second film last night and the conversation you just mentioned with Rio and Miles. It's such a human, relatable, like that's what that's what gets that's you what a mom and a son stuff. would talk about, yeah. and it wrap up in all of this crazy Spider Verse and Tyrannosaurus Rex, yeah, you know, dinosaur yeah, yeah, yeah. spider. There's this fundamental of like it makes my me story. so happy to hear you say. Yeah, that, I mean, oh, it's I'm just like that's that. By the way, I just want you right? stop making our job so hard. Oh, please, that's what I, I want to say. Saying, stop yeah. it. Well, that's I, an internal motto is exactly that. Is what do we do? We're going to tell epic stories with the human heart. Yeah. That's yeah. what Marvel has been yeah. for decades. That's what defines a Marvel story. So it, it's all those moments of Miles talking to his mom. Yeah. Uh, all those very, it's almost like when you read a, a, an, a magazine about movie stars and there'll be a, a section called celebrities. They're just like us. Right, right, right. That's what Marvel is. Right. Superheroes, yeah. specifically Spider-Man. It's true. Just like us. Well, I, look, I will say, I think what, as a fan of the content, you know, and one that, that was a fan long before I ever got in the industry, and, and you, you can, like, sniff when things are not authentic. You yeah. Can, there was a time when, when, you know, comic book films were starting to become more prominent. It almost seemed like the filmmakers were embarrassed, embarrassed by yeah. the comic book mm -hmm. origins. And they were, mm -hmm. everybody was clad in really dark leathers because, mm -hmm. you know, bright colors wouldn't work. And... I, I get it. You know, it was, it was sort of a, a sort of nurturing process for the audience, but I think to understand the truth of the characters, yeah. it, it is it's the humanity that that really brings you in and and hooks you and and it, it's it's not that it gets you through all the crazy stuff because I love all the crazy yeah. stuff, but that's that's the North Star yeah. for the audience to 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 interact with the T Rex and go like, yeah. Miles is worried about getting back home right now. Well, you know, we, we, you know, in a way we've, something we talked a lot about um, 
throughout all the games is we wanted to see their lives when they weren't wearing yeah. the suit. Like, mm. and we do a lot of we do a lot of mission playable, like not just cinematic, Honestly, but playable mission. Walking missions. around in the apartment and is a big like deal. you know, and, and sometimes you know, we, you know, uh, you know, obviously cool. it's really exciting to see Pete and Miles swinging around and fighting a giant Sandman, yeah. right? But I, you know, the thing we talk about a lot in the team is, in order to care about the stuff in the suit. You got to care about the stuff outside. outside the, you got to show the stuff that happens outside yeah. the suit because that stuff means more in the suit. If the stuff outside, like they got it, you got to have both. You a punch, a punch work. lands harder with more yeah. consequence yeah. if you understand what's yeah. happening outside. You know, look, even going through, I mean, going through the apartment and like flipping through the records, I was like, <laughs> okay, this is. Yep. Yeah. I'm feeling the texture of this world. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I could get a sense for what yeah. for what Miles was going through. Yeah. 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 I love that you guys put so much energy into letting me feel each space like so fully and that I could immerse myself in the lives of these characters. And it, it was just really like, and we were trying to do the same thing. And I love that you, you can actually inhabit and feel like you're actually getting to be in, in the shoes of these characters. You guys really put a lot into that. Thank you. Uh yeah, thanks. And I was going to say, too, I was um, so impressed by um, the movie uh, because you put so much in so little amount of time. Because even every time you um, introduced a new spider and you did those really quick, um, you know, montages of like, who is the Spider-Man that I'm, I'm talking to? And I was like, oh, my God, this is going 90 miles an hour. How we, and I was like, oh, I get it. I understand right. what they're trying to tell me. And then the other thing that totally blew my mind, too, is just the fact that you know, for us, like our game was so challenging because we had to deal with symbiotes, Sandman, you know, you name it, big things. But the fact that you're able to do that many artistic styles to represent every single character like blew my mind. Mm. Like it was such a crazy flex because <laughs> as I was watching it, I was like, again, <laughs> yeah. another one? This is insane. There's like 10 movies in one movie. This is I, incredible. I think if you're gonna say like anyone, everyone can wear the mask, anyone can wear the mask and you have to write your own story I think you have to show that. I don't think you can just say it. And I think when you say anyone can wear the mask, we sort of like almost created a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, it was sort of like challenge accepted. Right. Yeah. It helps because the, the, the step ups in technology are, are kind of incremental. So it helps to go back like I started in games 24 years ago. And what you could do was, was incredibly limited. You were lucky if an uh, animated character had fingers like that you could pose uh, or, or a bone past the ankle yeah. um, and it would, definitely facial animation was was limited sometimes if you're lucky there was a jaw to flap yeah. um, and so so if you if you look at that and then you kind of look at where we are now I mean just coming you know from Spider-Man 1 to Spider-Man 2 the leap is is still pretty incredible like the, the 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 speed with which we can move through the environment the environment is ray traced even if you're over the top of new york these are things you you could have good ideas when you were a young person but they're not possible right. so mm -hmm. so stop talking you know um you're gonna have to get much more clever and scrappy with what you're doing and now we can say those crazy things out loud and and maybe pull it off <laughs> you know so that's i think that's one of the biggest differences and it you know um it, it really helps everything like underneath the characters the the number of blend shapes running in a face is just science fiction compared right. to what we could do it, it, remember it's still rendered in real time uh, Ziva, full muscle deformations, like a, a lot more collaboration we, with art and visual effects just to make a character exist. Whereas, you know, back in the day, it was kind of like NASCAR. It was, you know, a couple, you know, just a few vertices and a, a okay texture. Right. Um, these, these things are incredible works of art. And the fact that they run in real time and get lit with ray tracing and real time shadows is, is phenomenal. It's just ridiculously awesome. Um, and uh, I, I think it's easy even for us to forget, you know, when we have that scene everyone meets and, and the entire cast is on screen with all of their high resolution heads, outdoors, real time, you know, shadows. And it's just, it's just stunning what people far more talented than me have enabled mm. us to, to be able to play around with and just, you know, make it the Marvel way or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, without them, there's none of this, you know. You know, earlier we were talking about uh, um, films, video games, uh, and, and how, say for films, for example, um, what was done before mm. with superheroes. And now, um, the, you know, 
it's in the last uh, uh, 10, 20 years, and now, and this, and this applies to games, film, we're, we're getting more and more and more amazing visuals, uh, and, and then we can do more superhero stories. But the, for the longest time, tech wasn't there. Tech, what was drawn on the page in comic books for a time was more amazing than you could see in any film. Right. Yeah. And it took a while for technology to catch up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it was different companies, different heroes. Uh, but now, finally, tech has caught up to our inner dreams mm. of when we were kids and we read comics and it's static images, but in our minds, we're almost turning it into a movie. What's happening between the panels? How is this moving? And it needed two things. It needed the technology and it needed generations of fans who love this stuff and who now somehow find ourselves in the position to make these things and make decisions. And when you have that combination of creators who grew up with it, who loved it, who's dying for a chance to show the world why, why did I name my son Peter? We can say, here's why. Uh, amazing creators who love it, and they, now we have the technology to deliver what was in our mind's eye in 3D for the world to see. Yeah. Why did you name your son Peter? Well, um, <laughs> no, um, I, I, but also, <laughs> but also I, I, I have to echo, I mean, a lot of this, you know, I, I made a couple films before the first Spider-Verse film and, and, and the second one, and the technology definitely wasn't there. Right. Um, so much of it is, I feel, honestly, like an embarrassment of riches of opportunities that have kind of come together in this incredible way where, I mean, just like this incredible web of life and destiny that sort of like come together to this perfect confluence of events that, you know, allowed us to have the technology was available when the opportunity to make mm -hmm. this film was available. Mm -hmm. Because I, as much as I love designing for design's sake, and yeah. you can't get me to learn my alphabets, um, you know, because I'd rather be drawing, like, as, as much as that might be true, I never want to do anything just for the sake of it. Um, the story that we had to tell mm. really did require this technology. We couldn't have told this story the way we told it 10 years ago. Right. We couldn't have told it 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, all those advances had to be made. You had to invent Blender. You had to invent Rebel. You had to invent all these different right. software packages. And we had to have geniuses at at Imageworks, Sony Pictures Imageworks, who've been like writing code and shaders for like decades and building and building and, and all the, the rigging t software that has had to get to the point, you know, like you're saying, you know, like to rig something as complicated as Olivia Octavius's, you know, sort of tentacles that were like these soft robotics, you know, that are sort of pulsing and breathing yeah. the whole time while they're, I mean, there's thousands of rig points that the animators were controlling there. And the fact that it's all possible, that we could think of all these different um, characters, but also that you had a story that said, hey, what if, and we just that had that proposition in it. What if everybody could wear the Spider-Man mask? What if everybody could wear the mask? And okay, is the technology there? And, it, and the fact that it was there, um, honestly, the technology is not only there, but if anything, it actually forced us to sometimes uh, be responsible. It did. I, I will say that one of the lucky things that we had as, as directors was, I, you know, I, I can use Photoshop. That's as far as I go. Yeah. Um, we got to talk, you know, go into a room, look at these beautiful images, and talk to what maybe 20 years ago would have been very tech-minded people as artists. Right. And they responded as artists. And it was about the art. It wasn't, the, you know, they would figure out how 
you know, whatever needed to be designed to, to achieve the thing that we were talking about. But they were, it was always art first. Absolutely. And that was, that was really, I think, refreshing and exciting and freeing because we were all coming from this really, really creative place first. And then, you know, we'd, stuff would run through its paces and then we would start getting really responsible, like, hey. But, but from what you're saying, I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely true. Like, when I, when, when I did production design on the first 3D animated film, every conversation was like, here's what we could do. Right. Yeah. Every conversation is like, well, here's, that's great. Here's, all right, there's some things you need to understand about how the computer works. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> and yeah. before, now, now, so let's lower your expectations. Right. Not in a way, and then it forces you to be creative in a different way. Sure. Okay. And, and you make great choices with the limitations. Here, because we almost had no limitations, then it was like, okay, which choices would act, and for the first time we were talking with our artists about which choices would be the best to tell this story, Just story. purely yeah. as a story and creative conversation. And I think it was a revolutionary way for us to approach it. And it, honestly, these like bold choices, yeah. it, it, was, it was harder to, it was harder to like stop ourselves. Yeah than it was to like, yeah. like we didn't have to, everybody just said, yeah, we could do that. Right. Oh yeah, we could do that. I right, Jacinda? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I, it's interesting because, you know, I'm like you, I like maybe basic Photoshop sure. and it's like really smart people who <laughs> yeah. tell me and I, I, I go, well, that looks cool. Can we make it 5% cooler? Can we five 10% cooler? Right. And I think what we kind of did on, you know, Spider-Man one was like, let's just, start off like it was like we thought of it as like this is our iron man like let's get it right mm -hmm. out of the gate so we can hopefully do more of these and then we did miles which was was so much fun and i think for a lot of us was just like one of those projects i think we'll never forget and then with spider-man 2 it's like we're just gonna go a lot bigger and we had a lot oh, yeah. of conversations i'm like well can we do this can we do this bobby can we have a giant sandman in the book? can yeah. we have you know how many how many tendrils can we have coming off the symbio arm and stuff like that and I think for me, you know, I would say, you know, I'm the one who's like, oh, can we try this? Can we try that? But then what's really exciting is having an idea, but then you hand it to Bobby, Jacinda mm -hmm. and their team yeah. and they go, yeah, that's cool, Brian, but we actually can make it even cooler. Yeah. And then it's just, it's like infinitely, like I think of back to like just Venom, like just Venom and starting off with like, does Venom, smile does venom i mean just having these 2d drawings and then all of a sudden you know later we're talking about how much drool is coming off and does the drool react realistically and wait you know and then okay we're going to remove the drool for this scene we're not going to have for this scene and and then then just letting like like people like bobby and his team just go i don't why am i saying anything just just cook just, just go, He's yeah. Just go. Yeah, we spent well for me i've spent at least oh, well almost five years i guess thinking about venom and the boots and how to you know, depict them. And I just remember when we first started, um, the symbiote's kind of like a shapeshifter, right? That it could become anything. And even really early on in R&D and pre-production, we had to think about what the rules were because um, originally we actually had these tentacle creatures that could be yeah. almost anything. They're all black, they're these blob monsters. Um, and we ended up switching directions because um, you started realizing that if it could be anything, it's really nothing. Mm -hmm. So, okay, fine. So now you have to mm -hmm. refine it a bit more. Mm -hmm. So then we started making up rules and we were like, well, if you're a symbiote, does the symbiote always have a host? And then if it's got a host, can it be an animal? Can it mm -hmm. be a quadruped? Mm -hmm. Can it be an octopus? Mm -hmm. Is it only a human? Mm -hmm. So then we started squeezing it down some more. And ultimately, because we want to tell um, a human story, we said, okay, it's going to be humans. Yeah. They're going to bond with humans. And then from there, it starts expanding because you know, we have um, symbiotes through the enemies, we have venom. We have characters who become symbiotized, like MJ, Harry, and Peter. And then we start covering the entire city with symbiotes and, and, and tentacles and, and things like that. So I looked at the comics and I looked at all the various depictions of the, the, you know, the symbiotes and, and Venom um, and even the tentacles. And I was pretty impressed because once you dig really, really deep into it, you'll see that the style um, and the way that all the artists have interpreted it, these characters and the materials is very different. Mm. Um, sometimes the tentacles are really fine and, 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 and um, smooth and curvy, and other times they're very angular and they're very thick. Um, and we have to really think about how to make a creature or creatures who are both 
changeable, but strong at the same time. Mm -hmm. So he spent a lot of time also looking then at the materials because, you know, is it going to be like black paint? Is it going to be like black slime? Um, and then ultimately we picked something that was in between. So it looks, um, you know, like it's again, not too heavy, not too, th uh, not too thick. So it looks like um, an alien uh, material. But then the tendrils themselves were like a huge headache because it, they're tendrils, but they're also sentient. You know, so some of this is solved with animation, which is, you know, what Bobby and, and his team did an, an incredible uh, job of. But then some of it would have to be solved with technology because when we do all the transformations, when, you know, Harry becomes Venom, um, things like that, that's way too many tentacles for an animator to animate by hand. So then we start getting into <laughs> simulations. Yeah. So we started doing simulations on how the tentacles would behave. But then the problem with that is because we're trying to simulate something that doesn't exist in real life, you can't just say, well, it's just gonna behave like water right. or it's gonna behave like, like slime or something. So then we end up doing simulations, but then we did, a, there's a lot of art direction. And I think I've spent the last eight months of productions just drawing tentacles. Wow. <laughs> tentacles animating, tentacles moving, tentacles wrapping around things. Um, and we were doing that, I think, in, Till the day we ship, we're still working on tentacles. Sure. Right? Are you giving then, it a base sim and then, <laughs> and then going on top of that and giving it the personality on top of like what the base sim we, would do? Well, we had a base simulation, but from there you had to then um, art direct it by using various inputs because mm -hmm. the Houdini um, artists are, are basically tech, tech, they're technical, yeah. Yeah. you know, they're not hand animating it. Right. So you have to draw over and tell them, hey, I want these tentacles to do this. And they're adjusting numbers right. to get them to behave the get way. Shapes, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then she's well, got me going, is it done yet? Yeah. <laughs> is it, is it, is it going to look, it, it, it's going to look good, right? It's going to look good. And she's like, just shut up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what I hoped everyone noticed after the game out is how many people love your version of Venom. Yeah. Because yeah. Venom is such, Venom is a character, there are certain yeah. characters at Marvel where people don't like any other superhero. They just like Venom. That's yeah. their one. So whether yeah. it's Wolverine, Venom. Ghost Rider. It's usually these characters with, with attitude, but when you look at them, you don't have to know anything else. Yeah. The design is so strong, it yep. speaks to you with this attitude. And I think the reason why um, it, it resonated with people is because of all those discussions we had, you understood there's all these things you can do with Venom, but what is Venom about? Venom is, part is the boogeyman. Part is dark reflection of Peter. Part um, is addiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and did I say body horror? Body horror, what is happening to you. Right. So when you make it human and it's changing, it has that effect. So it's all that understanding of the core of the yeah. character. And as long as you have that, then you can start Expanding, expanding, and expanding, but it all feels right because the players, the audience, know that you get it. That's, that's also one of the reasons why I was so petrified to get the character right. That's why we cast the voice of Venom last, because I was like, this is too much pressure. It's too much pressure. To, I mean, because that voice is yep. a signature thing, and you're yes. like, what? Because if he doesn't sound, I mean, he has to look right, but if he doesn't sound right, you get worried. And I remember working with our voice, one of our, uh, one of our dialogue um, managers, and I was like, you know, like, just, what if it was like, someone like Tony Todd, like a Tony Todd voice, not thinking we would ever, right. ever get Tony, and then Patrick, our dialogue manager goes, to a couple weeks later goes, you're not gonna believe this, <laughs> but I have, an, I have a audition recording from Tony. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, it's like, he's like, it's really bad, like, it's from, like, he just did it on his phone, and, but we got all these other ones to listen to. And so I listened to, I listened to all the other ones purposely because I was like, it's, it's God, yeah. it's gonna be him. And he said two lines, I'm like, just give him the job. Just get it. And, then, and then it's like, and that was kind of like the cherry on type of like everything. It was like, we had, the, we had the story we wanted to tell with Pete Harry and the symbiote. We had the character design. We started seeing how the tech was gonna work and then the, the voice coming online. And yeah. I remember him recording his first, you know, recording those first lines for that reveal trailer where he just says, yes, we will. And it's like, you're like, chills. oh yeah, Total chills. great. It was so much fun. Those are, and those are the kind of things that's hard as all this is, like those are the memories you just try to, totally. try to remember. It's like, those are those, just when you, that thing finally clicks, 
you know, and it's just awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said, once once Phantom became pretty much human, that was actually good news for us, animation-wise, because we, we know this. Um, so we could, you know, just make sure that people believe that character. They believe him physically, they believe him emotionally. They, um, they hear that voice and it comes from that body, you know, as, as, as much as we can. So if we can get everyone to believe in it. And then exactly what Jacinda said, it took, the entire studio to make symbiotic effects like there's no one person who gets to take credit on on that one um, animation wise there was a lot of really scrappy old school animating of tubes for years yep. um, and so a lot of that stuff is that but there's so much more that ended up going on top of it you know things that are you're like really we're gonna have that <laughs> um, and uh, and, it, and it worked and it did all come together in the end it was it was quite late and we were all stressed out and tired, but it was it, it was good. Like the, the the whole team came together and 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 made that character as believably as we can at this day and age. You know, wow. so. we didn't have uh, Venom in our movie, so there were no creative challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say what's interesting is that, you know, you said looking at the different comic comics with, that Venom was in and the different artists that would handle him. That's, I think, the unique thing about comics is, is that it's interpreted month to month sometimes by different artists. Yep. And it's, I think, your understanding of what makes the character work. You might not be able to honor every single artist's interpretation of it, but understanding what makes it unique and yeah. what your mind's eye saw while reading those comics, it, it comes across. In the game. Well, you know, it was interesting, like, when we, when we started working on Spider-Man, I assumed everybody was like me. It was like oh, action figures, comics, right. and then TV shows, movies, and then, you know, and it was like, oh no, I came in from that way. I came in from this way. I never read a comic. I only saw, and it's kind of that same thing of like, w at the end of the day, tr what are the common characteristics between all right. those different mediums mm -hmm. that we want to get? And that's the same thing, you know, like totally. now when we talk about a particular character like Venom. But even though he wasn't in our movie, <laughs> There actually were a few creative challenges. Um, and um, actually, one of the biggest things that we had to overcome, um, like constantly, was how much we had to balance, you know, putting, a, there, there's a lot of spectacle in our movie. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, like if we stand back, like, Joachim and I, we stand way back, like one of the, like our, in Kemp, we would, we would be standing from that bird's eye, you know, mile high view. There's a, a lot of spectacle we put into this movie and trying to decide like how much of it to put in so we didn't overwhelm yeah. our characters. Um, I mean, and it's like you guys are saying like, wow, you put so much into this movie. And that's what I, 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 I keep saying is like, we almost had too much power yeah. We almost had too much, like, unlimited, like, and we had this embarrassment of riches. And, and the idea creatively that, like, there'd be all this incredible crashing and bashing, but at the same time, we had to make sure that you could follow Miles in his right. emotional journey and that he wouldn't get lost and that the characters, you know, wouldn't be swallowed up by all this spectacle and that you could you could track what was going on. And then we had all these like complicated, I remember for the longest time, I mean, all of our creative challenges were story. Yeah. It was almost like technology for the first time wasn't our limitation. Right. Our, our tech, our, our honestly. Technology was sort of waiting us to go like, like all right like, guys, come on. What do you guys want to do? And we we're like, oh no. <laughs> like, like we're, oh geez, we're used to being backed into choices. Right, but right. Yeah. Here, here it was like, no, no, we can do anything. First of all, we're fans of the films. Like we really, like, I mean, I, hopefully I hear it's, it's like, I, 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 I yeah. love, yeah. I, I love it. And I love that, you know, and we, you know, in the first game we were like, hey, we do all these suits. People love suits. Mm. Well, there's these really cool suits from this first film. Can we get them in the game? And then obviously when we made Miles, um, we took it a step further. We're like, we're gonna do the suits and we're gonna try to emulate the animation mm -hmm. style. And I think for me seeing that, to you know, in nine years of working on this franchise, that's one of the craziest things I've ever seen that not only did someone have the idea to do that, but like we worked with all of your team right. and our animators going, we can, we can make yeah. the whole city feel like it normally does, but this character is going to animate differently. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, you know, we were working on Spider-Man. Well, we, we done the suits. We did the suits plus animation. 
we got to step it up even more. And I remember sitting on multiple right. calls with both of you right. and Kemp and going like, well, what can we do? And we batted around a ton of ideas. And I remember, I actually remember being in Washington DC at my in-laws house <laughs> and we did a Zoom and I was like, we we're trying to figure out what we could do. And I was like, well, we have these spider bots. Mm. Yeah. We have these spider bots. Yeah. Is there any, hey, what do you, cause like we had this really, we used in Spider-Man 1, we had these backpacks and everybody loved mm -hmm. collecting the backpacks. It kind of told like, you could learn more about Peter's eight years of being Spider-Man through the backpacks. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we're like, we want mm -hmm. that kind of collectible. And we're like, well, Pete and Miles have these spider bots. Let's need that for them. Well, what if they were spider bots from all over mm -hmm. the multiverse? And we're like, and I, was, I remember going like, what do you think? And then you guys brought up a character that didn't make into the film. And we're, like, right. and we're like, well, what if you collect all the bots and then you get this like location and we had even Genki involved in it. And it just kind of, I think that's like, it's a, what we did with the spider bots is a good example of like how we make games. Everything's just collaboration, it's trading different ideas. And yeah. we love that yeah. because the goal is always in, in the game, whenever there's side missions, side quests, we don't want the player to feel like, why did you make me do this? This has yeah. nothing to do with anything else. Yeah. So the goal is always, here's the main mission. If we have a side mission, how can we make it um, connect either thematically uh, uh, to the main story that, or it echoes ideas or it reveals more about character? And um, in the first game with the backpacks, yeah. that came from, well, if I was Spider-Man, on rooftops, I would leave myself backpacks. I would have a power bar, I would have water in it, I would have first yeah, yeah, aid. Yeah. That's a very Spider-Man mm -hmm. thing. Makes sense. He's not a yeah. billionaire with his cave. He's running around the city, so he would have to store these backpacks. Um, so then as a player, yes, it's a side quest. Yes, you're gaining points, but you're learning more about Peter. And that's something that Spider-Man would do. When you told me the spider bot idea, it's like, yes. Because as you say, what do we care about? Story. Yeah. yeah. And you had these spider bots. Here's a spider bot that is themed to Spider-Man 2099. Yeah. Why would this be in our world? So then when you came with the, the story idea, it's like, great. You can just play this side quest and collect it and that's cool. But you added that layer of story. And then if you go and play it, there's a connection. There's a direct connection. Yeah. Well, to the film. Well, the other thing was, I will tell you guys, I haven't told you guys a story, but I remember, so I'm working one night and I get a call, I get a phone call and it's from Yuri Lowenthal, who plays Peter Parker. Yeah. And he goes, I got to tell you what I just did. I'm like, what? He's like, I just recorded lines for the movie. <laughs> and, and he's, and I could, you, I could, and I know Yuri really well. And I could just sense the smile he had on his face. Um, that he got to be part of it. And just, I think that's the thing. I think we always look at how can we, first of all, one, not, like we all know we're working on complicated things that take a lot of a lot of time to make. And we also don't want to do something that like makes it harder for you to explain in the movie. Same thing with the game. Sure. We want it to be, a, uh, you know, if, if you know, you know, and then, but there's a little bit extra. And I think to see the cross collaboration between the team. And I remember we, we must have like four or five different oh meetings gosh, of finally yeah. getting on this, you know, figuring like, how can we make it work? Cause like, you know, we're like, I'm like, well, we want to do more, but like, we're running out, we got to get this game done. And you guys, well, we got to get this film done. Right, and it's like, right. you know, we're kind of going back and forth. And I feel like, um, it's just one of those things where you look back and you're like, I can't believe we were able to do that and have that kind of and I collaboration. Think I, I will say, I think it's generational because I do, I, you know, I've been around long enough now to have worked for the previous couple generations where there was just this like, I don't even want to call it like a competitive nature, but there was sort of this separation where it was like, no, 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 that thing's tied up in this thing. You can't yeah. do it. Mm. If you want to do it yeah, as yeah. a fan and you know the fans want to see it yeah. and you know yeah. you can do it right and you can do justice and you're yeah. not doing it as a, as a, you know, as this sort of 100%. throwaway, then it's, it's worth doing it. It's worth yeah. exploring and it's worth maybe staying, you know, up a couple extra days to make it happen. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that was, um, I can't believe we pulled it off because that came in so late. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember when Brian told us, he's like, okay, we have to, we're going to do this crossover, we're gonna, but don't worry, we've got some assets from the animation. Right, right. And we're like, oh, okay, get the animation uh, assets. And we're like, okay, we can't use this. <laughs> oh. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, so, um, so 
what we ended up doing was we took what we could use and then we had to rebuild it. Um, but then uh, because we can't take a lot of the, the animation assets, we actually then we look at trailers of the game. Oh, and wow. then we've asked for stills from you guys yeah. and just said, yeah. okay, how do we put this thing together? Mm. And then same thing with the spider bots because at the time that wasn't something that we said we were gonna do and we had no, who was gonna do the spider bots? We'd only built one, yeah. that was part of the original gameplay. And we were racking our brains trying to figure it out. But one of the artists who worked on the spider bot was just like, oh, you know, I mean, you mean like this? And he just did a paint. Hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, is that a J. Jonah Jameson spider bot, a little mustache? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes um, it is. <laughs> and then like, it seemed like every couple of days he was like, just like, oh, I just did this on my lunch break. Yeah. I just did this whatever. And, and like all the spider bots in the game were actually done by this one artist. And I guess he's, cool. he, it kind of goes to show that if you're having fun, it's not work. Yeah. I think that's the key. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. it was completely unexpected. We we're trying to figure out how to do it. And he just said, this is the best thing ever. And he was so passionate about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I love that some of the same artists that worked on the film, mm -hmm. like yep. got to collaborate with you guys yep. on the game, and 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 I and, and I know there's like animators that have also like worked on the movie. Oh yeah. And I and and I I think that's just wonderful that there's this like, like, there's this universe of people that are sort of connected and passionate about this, these, these characters. Yeah. It was actually I was fo you know obviously when the game comes out you start to follow certain people and they you know the social media they'll post about their experience and I was tracking Chris and where he was and when he was playing and he's like and he's like I just saw something I can't believe it's in the game and I was like what's thinking I was like oh it's the spider it's the spider verse connection there that's you go. the that when he got the finale that's the thing he's he's talking about well I'll so. tell you that hearing yeah. all the last minute scrambling and all the hustle and all the collaboration it paid off <laughs> I'll tell you this for the Marvel games team yeah. as we're getting closer and closer to your movie's premiere and different posters were coming out. Individually, this is, and this is all, we weren't back in the office again, we're all in COVID and yeah. we're all separated, but we're all individually scanning each poster. And when we would all see our Spider-Man with the white spider, we would instantly take a picture, share it with each other, <laughs> and we'd say, oh, we exist. That's amazing. And, and eventually when we were in the theater, I was mentioning earlier, I was sitting there, and when that scene happened, I couldn't help myself. I was alone, but I pointed. <laughs> and I, I said, oh, that, that's our Spider-Man. So when you talked about telling your own story, in a way, you told our story. Yeah. And so we saw ourselves yeah. that's awesome. in the poster, in the movie, we said, we existed. We created something that is being added to the toy chest and you embraced it. Uh, and to see that circle of life, yeah. mm. we all look at the comics, we create things, we get inspired, then the people that, uh, uh, then it goes back, people who make the comics see what we do and put it into the comics, they look at what you're doing in the film, and this whole interchange of ideas and cool stuff is so cool to see, and it says to the audience, Maybe those 13 year old kids like we were sitting at home and saying, I want to do that. Mm. When they see how, how much we work together and that we're all fans and we That's put it. our fandom yeah. on screen yeah. and then hopefully the next generation says, I want to do that. Right. Yeah. And going yeah. even further, I think the fact that we, uh, you know, like it was, we, we saw that relationship build with the audience too mm. yeah. from the first film. Mm -hmm. So in the second film, we were actually even more prepared for that. And, you know, even while we were making the first film, seeing that, that like, what are people out in the audience mm -hmm. passionate about that we don't even know about? And getting people to s s get, watching people get excited and knowing that you got excited to see yourselves represented and see people's yeah. favorites. And people, people on our crew up. that were like playing your game while they were working on the film. Like yeah. we That's almost, awesome. I mean, we almost put one of your guys glitches that made it into <laughs> like, it, we, we almost put like a, Which like one? a heater, like a space heater. <laughs> oh, was, like swinging. Yes. Through. Yes. From the yeah. Miles game, there was a space <laughs> heater. Yeah, there was like, space yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a cube one in this game. Yeah. So we fixed that. Yeah, but there's, yeah, there's plenty a cube. Of spider, we call them spider cube, yeah. spider cube, right? <laughs> But yeah, I, I think yeah. the fact that we had a crew member that brought that up and said, like, what about if there's like a space heater? Like, that's <laughs> true love. Yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah. 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 Also, yeah. like on a, I think definitely like what, when, when we made the first film, we, beyond even 
on the, the these beautiful stories that you guys are telling about individuals. I think we we didn't even realize before that first movie came out, and certainly we felt it the entire time we were making this movie, oh. how important Miles Morales became yeah. to an entire culture yep. mm -hmm. of people at, around the world. And it was almost overwhelming yeah. to, 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 to feel that on the first movie. I remember we were making it and we were like, this is really cool. Like, I love this. But the tears that people would come up to us with and the representation that yeah. people felt and just how powerful it was for them. Um, and then on the second film, we knew we had to do more. We knew, we knew that, you know, if we, we had to live up to this idea that we had established that anyone can wear the mask. Yeah. And, and it was an incredible um, gift and it was an incredible um, challenge, but it was an important one that I think we all um, took with us into this and said, we can do even more mm -hmm. and we can show even more and create even more of that feeling and still put miles at the center of it yeah. because yeah. we had this, you know, we, it's, we had to make sure it was still his movie, yeah. you know, and, and, and somehow all of that was such a huge challenge, but it was the most worthwhile, amazing thing that I, I think I've ever gotten to be a part of. Um, and, then, and then it was incredible to see when this film came out, there were things that you didn't even know if people would see. You didn't even know if people would notice. Right. Yeah. There were things we put so far in the background because there's hundreds of spider people. Yeah, yeah. There's things we did so quickly yeah. and so, so fast. And, you know, whether they're little Easter eggs or whether they, they're like, but we learned on the first film that these fans really are paying attention in a way that I <laughs> don't think I, I, I was prepared for. I don't think we had an ability with CRT TVs to pay attention because the fidelity just wasn't there. It was like a fuzzy thing that we would like. You couldn't catch it. Kemp, what was it like for you, who didn't work on the first film, mm -hmm. to now join? Like, what kind of, what did, what kind of pressure, what kind of, like, what did you, like, what was it like for you to now join and go? I mean, because that, I mean, that film was so well received, won all the awards. Now right. you're coming and joining. Like, what was it like for you to join that team? It was exciting, but it was also like, I don't want to do anything they did in the first film. Yep. That was my attitude from the get-go. That was all our attitudes. Anything was just like, anything from the first film, everything that people loved, we loved it too, yeah. and we don't want to do any of that. Yeah. And we I have to, to say, completely like, different. And I have to say, like, like, I was so glad when they, that they, they were my fellow director, that we, that they were, that I got to make a movie with them because I wouldn't have wanted to work on the second one mm -hmm. if they said, can you just do more of that? Yeah. The fact that they were like, we're all three going to lock arms and we're not going to do anything we did before. Yeah. And, and we didn't like one, I'll speak to one specific thing that I, I love so much about what we did do with our film. And it really goes back to comic books. In the first film at the very end, they, ha they Miguel O'Hara first shows up. Um, and then of course he's in our film. Miguel looks completely different. He does. Yeah. We don't explain it. Right. His costume is different. Other than Oscar Isaac's voice, Lila looks different. Yeah. When you read comic books and a new artist come on, comes on, your characters just look different. Yeah. Yeah. It's the hand of a new artist. You know what I mean? When you go from Jim Byrne to, to, to Paul Smith, suddenly characters have different hairstyles. Right. Yeah. And everything we tried to do was like, we're going to show the world that this is the hand, these are the hands of different artists. Mm -hmm. This isn't the same team. Ever, Phil and Chris are still involved, but like, Let's just don't explain it. It's a comic book. The hands of a new artist are going to give you something that looks different. Even Miles' world, which was our template in the first mm -hmm. film, that's a world that's established. Justin can confirm we, we built it from the ground up. It doesn't even look the same. Mm -hmm. Miles' world in our film doesn't look the same as Miles' world in the first film. Let's just, it's it's just our version of it. But that's what you love about, you know, telling these stories and bringing on new creative voices, you want it to feel different. Yeah. You and, you know, yeah. and I think That's how you get the best comics, right? Yeah. It's and like... That, <laughs> and Phil and Chris are fantastic at 
allowing that to happen. You know, they sort of, they, they, bring, they bring new voices in and they let those voices be heard. Uh, I mean, look, I think there's also an inherent thing that happens with your guys' games specifically is that, you know, my wife's not a gamer. She appreciates all the stuff that we do. She appreciates the creativity. But her, my kid, it's like a, it's like a visualized wish fulfillment. You know, when I'm playing that game, like she stops in her tracks and she goes, oh, all right, what's going on? Are, are, you, are you controlling this right now? Like, she doesn't, that, that thing, it's, it, it, again, it expands and it opens up to feeling an emotion that, that isn't necessarily tied to a narrative, a specific narrative. It's a thing that's inside of us that you guys are able to tap into that I don't even, I mean, maybe the movies do on some level, they, they, they let a, a certain level of freedom, but that to me is like an intangible, that's like a, something that, that it's unique to you guys, it's unique to your industry. Yeah, I think for me, when I think about Greater Together, I think, I think back to something I said earlier was, what I, what I really don't think I, we set out, but ended up being was that the Pete Miles relationship, probably for me ended up being the strongest relationship in the game because of how much their relationship evolves through some good times, but also some bad times mm. where it was Peter being there for Miles at the start, where Miles is more for Peter at the end and they grow. And I think about my time in Insomniac and working with these two over here for now, you know, 15 years and over 10 years with this one and right. thinking about, I would, you know, I hate when say like, oh, you're the creative director, you're the one with the vision. No, that's a title. Right. But the truth is, I'm a better insomniac and a better creative director because of these two. I'm a better person because of these two, because Bobby's the one who's sitting there going to meeting going, hey, Bri, like enough is enough. Or like Jacinda saying like, hey, I, I think we should do it this way. Mm. And I, I think, I hope, the, I, what I love is that the, for me, the game represents what it feels like to be part of this team and this group. Like, I mean, they are my, I mean, I spend as much time with them as I do my real family. They are my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would stand in front of a bus for them. And I love how they've made a little kid's dreams come true. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, now I was gonna just wrap it up too for, for the three of us, because for me, Be Great Together does refer to our, our core group. And it's not just us three, it's like our, you know, there's more to them than obviously yeah. our entire team. Sure. But I mean, we've been with this franchise, the same people, for like eight years, eight, nine years yeah. <laughs> Li living living this. And I feel like that's pretty unusual, you know, in media or any great franchise to have the same people. And these projects are, I mean, you all know your creative people too. It's like, they take a lot out of you personally, yeah. you know, mentally, emotionally. But I think having people around you to like help you, you know, and to understand what you're going through, but then also to make you a better, you know, creator too is something that's really unique in, you know, I, it's really unique obviously to me in the industry. That's what I, I feel at least. <laughs> and I feel very fortunate every day, you know, to be working with, with you guys and, you know, and the in, rest of the team. In the yeah. end, I mean, we are only as good as the people we work with. 100%. And we are yes. only as good as the, as the effort and the artistry and the passion of those people that we are surrounding ourselves with. And I don't think um, the three of us could take credit for anything that's really on screen truly without mentioning that there were a thousand of people. Yeah, yeah. That literally. Actually, 100 percent that. Yeah. Yeah. That, yes. that actually, you know, made us greater. We were greater together. And, you know, we, I sometimes think like, you know, funny way, um, you know, the, the, of the analogy of like, yeah, there's this like invisible dartboard that I, I can somehow see somewhere out there that Kim can see, that Joaquin can see, and, and we give a thousand darts to people. And we get, there's a thousand people who give a thousand darts and they're all, they all stand up to throw it. Yeah. And, we, and our job is simply to just go a little bit this way, a little bit that right, way, right. okay, now let go. And then, okay, here's another one. All right, a little bit this way, a little bit that way. But honestly, they're the ones throwing the darts. They're yeah. the ones hitting the bullseyes. Yeah. Yep. And we're not 
doing any of that mm -hmm. other than trying to nudge the, the hand, the arm, a little bit closer to that target that we're seeing out there. But they're the ones who make it possible even for us to see what's in our head. Yes. And, and they're the ones yes. that really, their faith in us and the fact that we do think of ourselves as a family of artists who are working together and their faith in us is a huge, immense responsibility. And I think we constantly would like have to like mention and thank them and constantly we would go to them and say, how can we do this? And can right. we, is there a way we can do this better? Is there, you know, hey, come to us. We give you permission. Tell us how this could actually get even bigger, better. What can you add to it? Because I'll let you throw the dart. And by the way, it's, it's okay to fail. Like, yeah. oh, we're, yes. we're going we're gonna to fail plenty, and that's what's going to allow us to find, find the light. I always joke, this failure is just one step closer to success. That's it. Like that's it's, it. Ju it's just, it's just you got to go through that. And I, 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 w I would never, ever fault someone for trying something and it didn't work. Yeah. Like, it, 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 that's like, you just, that's creative, that's just creative kryptonite. And just, you can't, you got to, you got to let people go big, go bold, it's, especially if they're passionate about it. If they're in, if they want, if they get excited about it, like with the spider bots, you just let them, let them go. Let them go. Yeah. Because what they're gonna bring back is beyond anything you ever could expect it. You right. know, when you are talking about these big thing, themes of family and responsibility and destiny, um, it, it reminds me of, um, Something I learned from, from Stan Lee, who co-created almost all the characters. Not only did he say, hey, every comic can be someone's first comic, mm. which guided us on how do we make the story. What does that mean? It means welcome everyone. Yeah. Make it as yeah. accessible as possible. There's no level of fan. We're all fans. Yeah. Mm. He also said, at Marvel, what do we, t what do, we do? We're storytellers. And Sometimes when you first get to Marvel and you'll be asked, what kind of stories does Marvel tell? And you may say, oh, we, we tell superhero stories. We say, yes, but underneath that, what do we do? We tell moral fables. Every story is about something, a theme, and hopefully we're saying something to the world to say, we don't have all the answers, but we're gonna ask questions and we're gonna talk about characters that we hope we act like. Um, and through those moral fables, give people hope, inspire them. What that does is it's the engine. Stan also says a story without a theme is like a human without a soul. And who puts the soul there? People. So it's all of you, the creators, with your ideas, you come and you inject that soul into the body and that's what connects to people when you tell your moral your moral fables it's your beliefs it's what you want to tell what you want to talk about and the people feel that soul inside your story